Let's move on to Senate Bill 126. The title is to revise certain provisions regarding the common language of the state. My understanding is we have quite a few folks that want to testify, so I would uh, uh, like to limit the proponent testimony to 20 minutes if we can, and if you can uh, be brief with your comments. Uh, Senator, Welcome, Senator Heinrich. You have the floor once you're seated, sir. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Senator Troy Heinert, District 26 from Mission. Um, Mr. Chair, I have an amendment that's been distributed. Okay. Let me dig it up here. Okay, go ahead and speak to the amendment, sir. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I'll move uh, Amendment 126KA. Okay, we have a motion by Senator Kennedy, seconded by Senator Langer, to move uh, Amendment 126KA. Uh, all those in favor of the motion will say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, sir, you go on with your uh, uh, testimony on amended Senate Bill 126. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and so the members of the public uh, uh, know what the amendment, uh, if I could just read it, it's, it's pretty brief. So on page one, line five of the printed bill, delete languages and insert language of the state is the language of the Ocheti Shakoi, the seven council fires, also known by treaty as the Great Sioux Nation, comprised of three dialects, Dakota, Lakota, and Nakota. Um, in working through this bill with Secretary Flute, uh, it was recommended that we we make that change. It, it tightens this up because we don't have three different languages. We just have three dialects of the, of the same language. So I, I appreciate the passage of that. Uh, you folks see me every day, and I know we have people who, who traveled a, a long ways to get here and would like to address our committee. So I'll stand down right now and answer any questions uh, that you may have at the end of the hearing. Okay, sounds good. Glamour. Further proponent testimony. Senate Bill, amended Senate Bill 126. Further proponent testimony. Don't be shy. Come on up. <laughs> okay, we have some brave souls coming forward. Once you're seated, you have the floor. Uh -huh. Just uh, please introduce yourself for the record and and continue on. Ihomi taki api yupia ket iushke de ampetuki na pechi uzapi a nino osni ash teha ihangto oyate etaha ohipi mi charge ki kushi hemacha toka inajewi dakota mi charge ka ska oyate mi charge ki faith paradigo de takoja talk mi talk chi wa hi o hina chi omawani heche Dueki he ija enkta. Aha, takoja. Mituaki ojiji aking takshto summer imachiapi. Lokota mi chajeki, jigala washtewi na washiji mi chajeki, summer romero. Ogolala kota he macha, utawak bala el wati, wambli hokbi oshbaya el oapa, inawayanki, Alex Romero, na dewayanki, Wayne Frederick, a chantewash de nape chisa pikshto. Ah, you pick it. Oh, ha. Tokahe de daku e pinkta. I just wanted to, first of all, uh, allow you to hear the beauty of our language. And I also wanted you to understand how it felt when I was five years old and I went to a country school in White Swan number four and I didn't speak English. And so I was in your spot there listening to the teacher telling me that I needed to do all of these things. So it gives you, Shke Unhipi, we've come with joy. Nobody has done that for many, many uh, years or winters. Thank you. 
money da he un un chimpi kunshi oganaki hena so in our hearts the grandparents because we had that experience of talking and learning from our language and in our dakota language i come from the dakota nakota dialect there's similarities but there's also a codified form of the language and so when you speak in dakota dohan ibiduk cha chana Dakota okna taku epinkta hantash nina woksapa yukan. So when I look at the English language, it's really confusing for me. So if I run into a conflict or a problem, I have to go back to my language and I run it through my filter, and that makes total sense. Because some of the English words are very, very confusing, and they're even more confusing if you're a lawyer, because you can't say yes or no. And so then, <laughs> then it really becomes a challenge. So, in our language, we have words that are specifically codified. And this morning, I want to give you an example, and I'll try to hurry this up. But it's to gain an appreciation of linguistics. If you look at the word in our language, woope. It's a big, big teaching. Wo, in a word in our language that starts with a wo, it means values. So the minute that Takoja hears wo, she knows that there's something significant going on. Uh, wo ope means pe means sharp, like a knife. So when you put the two things together, wo ope means a law. That's what you're doing to here. It means the sharp knife of the law. It makes it real, and it makes it sharp, and it's finite, and it means something. And he on de am petu kin you pick it. Am petu du to manje ed on kumpi. We're living in a red day where we have to do this because just this morning I had another joyful moment. There's a little Takoja boy that's seven years old. He greeted me in my language. I was trying not to cry, so I told him to hurry up and get me some Kleenex. But he greeted me in my language, and I asked him. I said, "How old are you?" And he said, "Ah, shape." He said, "I'm six, six years old." He was the age that I was when I started to have to compromise my language, and I was, by the grace of Creator, I was given a teacher from the Ska Oyate. We call all of you Ska means white, Oyate means nation. You come from the Ska Oyate, and I had a marvelous teacher in country school. And when she saw me, they literally had to drag. The police came after me because my grandma didn't want me to be taken away. And so when they dragged me to that country school, and she greeted me, and, and I'm thousands of years old, so this was a long time ago when country school was still in existence. And when I went in there, and she started to work with me, and she realized that I couldn't speak Nawahushni, Skawiate, Wichoiake. I didn't understand the English language, and she looked at me after about two months, and she. Said, Said, you know what? She said, "Little girl," she said, "You're really smart. We're going to win the county spelling bee." And I got scared because I'm allergic to bees, and so I thought I better study really hard. Ata ota umaspekta. I so I studied really hard, but to the grace of that woman who allowed me to be bilingual, she even started learning my language. And two years later, we went to the county spelling contest in Lake Andes, the Charles Mix County Spelling Contest, and I. Didn't understand all of your ways all the time because I had been raised out in kind of like a little wild Indian, and when I went there, she insisted I wear a dress. And I remember she dragged me in there, and they lined us up at the end, and they put me at the end. There were two kids in front of me, and I kept looking at her, and she was crying. And I thought, Oh, Tehia na get echamo when not chea. She's crying, and I did bad. And she went. I said, Dakwe, and of course she didn't understand what that meant. And I said, What's going on? And she just kept crying. And so then they. Lined us up, and the first kid got a,、um, a yellow ribbon, or a white ribbon, I think it was. The second one got a red rib,、uh, red ribbon, and the third one, and I thought I got last. I won the blue ribbon for the Charles Mix County Spelling Contest in two years. I was able to learn English, so it's amazing when you're young. I think when you get a little bit older, like some of you, it would be a challenge, but you could do. <laughs> but the important thing is to support it and understand that you come from a land that is called Dakota, and Dakota means the people. So, with my granddaughter here, I have other grandchildren. I have a five-year-old grandson, and oh, he nakchi woagdaka. I talk with him all the time. And the other day, he got in the car with me, and he said, "Kushi, do we speak Dakota? Do we speak Spanish?" 
And I said, no, Takoja, we speak Dakota. And he said, well, what's wrong with Dora? Because he can't understand Dora because she speaks Spanish. So the point is, if you have Spanish in schools, you definitely have to have Dakota. And my grandchild won't be confused anymore. That makes sense? So, and it's good for his, what we call Nagi, because he already thinks in our language. He already, as soon as he sees an elder come up, my son told me the other day he opened the door for some people. And he, I said, Nape Yuza, he puts his hand up. He knows all those protocols of respect that were codes of behavior in our language. And so I am happy that you are most assuredly going to be in support. And, you know, you're all younger than me. You're probably young enough to be my grandchildren, expect, except him. But, um, <laughs> but I think that hopefully your hearts will move that this needs to be, it's been a long time coming. So that you support this in the state of South Dakota. And, and for me, in my 70th year, it's going to um, make me happy because it's going to make it, open some doors for those little ones that are sitting out there and all across South Dakota. Uh-huh. Did you want to say anything, Tapkoja? No? All right. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. Uh, would you please state, uh, I might have missed it. Okay. But would <laughs> you, you please did. state your name for the yeah. record? Toka, my Indian name is Toka Inajimwe. It means standing stone. And my Ska Oyate name is Faith Spotted Eagle. Okay. Thank you very much. And, and I live in Lake Andy, South Dakota. Thank you Dakota. for... Uh, and your this granddaughter's is name? Takoja, your name. Uh, my Lakota name is Chikala Ashtewi. It means small good woman. But my English name is Summer Romero. All right. Thank you very much. Uh-huh. And thank you for all the wonderful clarification. Because when you first started to testify, I'm sitting here thinking, okay, how do I... How do I deal with this? Because we're all sitting here in somewhat bewilderment, and I was going to ask Senator Heinert to come up and educate <laughs> us, us, us kids. So and thank you, you know, very much for your testimony. And I'm glad you said that because you felt like I did when I was five years old and I went to that school. And in some instances in testimony, I would rather speak in my language. So we need translators because then I can think. It would be like you asking to testify in Dakota. So, well, I got to tell you, you you have a a, a wonderful knack for both languages. I struggle uh-huh. with English, but uh-huh. uh, thank you. Uh, well, well, Peter. Further testimony on uh, amended Senate Bill One Twenty Six. Further proponent testimony. Okay, once you're seated, sir, and introduce yourself, and you have the floor. Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. My name is Peter Hill. I live in Pine Ridge, and I'm here in support of SB 126. I work with the Lakota Immersion Child Care and Elementary School Program, which I founded in 2012 and which is now under Thunder Valley CDC. When I first moved to the reservation in 2001, I only knew two words in Lakota, tipi and how. You probably know those words as well from Hollywood movies. But I learned the language to fluency as an adult. Over the many years I taught high school on the reservation, I always told my students, if I can learn the language, so can you. And if I can see the value in keeping Lakota alive and preserving it for future generations, you surely can as well. My life's work is Lakota language revitalization, so it should go without saying that I support the bill and what it represents. And I know that a major portion of the testimony today would center around themes of preservation of heritage and cultural value. I know the importance of those themes and that many of you will be moved by such testimony and recognize its significance. But I would like to highlight a somewhat different line of argument for SB 126. We all know that Native communities within our state of South Dakota whether on reservations or within towns and cities, suffer from elevated levels of poverty, substance abuse, dropout rates, teen pregnancy, homelessness, and so forth. And we all, I would hope, recognize the historical factors that have led to this modern-day situation. 
Regardless, these statistics negatively affect quality of life across the state, and they hurt South Dakota's reputation and status in national rankings. When our Native children underperform in state school systems, it keeps the state education stats lower than they would be otherwise. Native unemployment drives up the state's overall unemployment rate. The same can be said of rates of homelessness, incarceration, domestic violence, and various other statistical categories in which Native Americans are disproportionately represented. My fellow supporters of SB at 126 highlight the many positive outcomes of children learning their heritage language when they grow up. We ourselves have seen and can testify to children's improved self-esteem, self-image, self-confidence, and the like that comes from learning their own language and culture. But we also recognize that these can be hard to quantify. What is quantifiable, <clears throat> and what there is a tremendous amount of data out there to support, are secondary effects of improved school performance among Native children, lower dropout and higher graduation rates, higher rates of college matriculation, and improved life prospect as adults in a wide variety of ways. So in summary, do you want higher educational statistics for our state? Support Native language education. Do you want lower poverty rates overall? Support Native language education. Less crime on the streets, support native language education. Fewer homeless people in your communities, improved race relations in South Dakota, support native language education. And how do you support native language education? Supporting SB 126 is an excellent start. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further proponent testimony. Further proponent testimony. Amended Senate Bill 126. Okay, welcome. Once you're seated, if you tell us tell us who you are and you have the floor to to speak. Amos and watch up in na ina wayaki putan etiapina ate wayaki raina chapina unchi wayaki karen what 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 you can pull the mic down a little closer if you want, so you don't have to stretch. There you go. Balawayaki O'Brien Charging Card at Chapina Wanyatu Masha Koi Mahbeluta Awa Bawa Chikapa Pas Chiklap Pablaska LRT na Chancha Washi and Apache is a big yellow. More quota quota beta Wahila. Good morning. My name is. Yeah, yeah, turn your mic on and please introduce yourself. Okay, good morning. Wapila Kiwi Imachapi. In English, my name is Karen White Butterfly. At this time, I'm going to um, um, recall uh, a statement, um, a saying my gra great grandmother used to say, which was, Iapi Awangalakape, which means, um, at the time, it meant uh, to watch what you say, to watch your language, watch what you say. But in today's world, we need to um, we need to protect and take care of our language, to maintain our language. So um, I am here to, in support of this Bill 126, um, and um, thank you for. Um, uh, bringing this up so that we can come support our language. Thank you. Okay, thank Hello. you. Further proponent testimony. Amended Senate Bill 126. Further proponent testimony. Okay. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and you have the floor. Uh, my name is Nikina Mills, and I'm an elected official from the Oglala Sioux Tribe. 
Good morning, Mr. Chair and committee members. My Lakota name is also Tita Tate Chikalawi, which is Little Wind Woman. Um, I am also a mother to us to a son who is in the Lakota language program, and he's actually sitting back there. And he, he his name is actually Shy Diem, and he tries to act shy. I was trying to have him come with me, but oh, he did. Okay, hi. But so he's so he's in the program. <clears throat> so I just want to share that I'm here to testify in support of the Senate Bill 126 and on behalf of the many Native American speakers who, are, who currently do speak the languages in the state of South Dakota and the ones that are yet to come. I want to personally share with you why I'm in support of this bill. First of all, my great grandparents were forced to never speak the language and were punished if they did. My grandparents and my parents never learned, so in turn, they never learned to speak the language. I have learned very little to speak the language. And I learned very little just from the school that I attended when I was a little girl. My son, who is eight years old, and he's part of this first cohort in, with this language program. So you can see with my emotion that that this is so special to me, that, that he's able to know so much, or he's able to learn this language that I wasn't, that I and my grandparents and my great grandparents weren't able to learn. So it took over a hundred years, four generations, for my son to be able to have the Lakota language to be a part of his life. And he was, and I'm very fortunate that he's been able to have this be a part of his life since he was 16 months old. Second, I am very thankful for Mr. Peter Hill's dream of wanting to create and develop this language program to what it has become today. It was his dream that allowed my 16-month-old son to learn this language and to aid in his development of his identity and his confidence. My, my eight-year-old son has so much confidence, even when I can think back to when I was a little girl and to see that his level of what he's able to do it's, it's so much different from when I was a little, and I'm pretty sure it was the same for my parents. This bill will reinforce and strengthen the importance of the value of our language as indigenous people. Lastly, I have seen the increase of the use of our language happening slowly over the last 15 years, and now it's in waves, as language is being taught in mostly all the schools back on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation. In closing, these were just a few of the many reasons why I and the Oglala Sioux Tribe support this Bill 126. Thank you for your time and consideration in this matter. Pilama Yaye. Okay, thank you. Would the shy one like to introduce himself in your native language? Can Guess not. He can do it. He can. Okay. He All right, thank you. Further proponent testimony on amended Senate Bill 126. Welcome. Once you're seated, you have the floor. Hi, <clears throat> sorry, I'm emotional because this has been very emotional, but Alyssa Sierra Emachiapi Waunspe Wichakia Wawashi Hichamu. My name is Alyssa Sierra Concha and I am a teacher of two of the boys that you saw. I teach at the Lakota Immersion Program at Red Cloud School. And I am in favor of passing the Senate Bill 126. Most of the adults in this room have chosen to dedicate our lives to revitalizing our Lakota language. We represent the hundreds of years of generations who have fought to keep our traditions, our land, our language, and ultimately our identity. We represent the thousands of warriors who sacrificed themselves to be respected as a people and treated justly. I am not here to ask you to pass this bill for us adults. We've grown up fighting and will keep fighting for our people. I do ask you to pass this bill for our children, though, like the two boys that you saw today and all the children you see in this room. I want them to grow up knowing that their state is fully behind them and who they are as Indigenous people. By passing this bill, you will let them know that who they are and the language they speak is not only recognized but celebrated. I want these beautiful children in here and all throughout the state to feel nothing but pride in growing up and instead of having to fight for who they are, they'll be, still be celebrated growing up. And I want them to continue feeling this pride all throughout their lives, to so just keep growing in their pride and loving who they are 
and their culture. In passing this bill, you will aid that. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further proponent testimony. Amended Senate Bill 126. Welcome. Once you're seated, you introduce yourself and you have the floor. Good morning. My name is Lynette Whitehat. I am a member of the Rosebud Sioux Tribe in South Dakota. Uh, I work with the Todd County School District currently at Hedog Elementary, and I spent 16 years of my life in education. Um, <clears throat> I've been very fortunate and very lucky to have good teachers and mentors uh, growing up. However, I am the first generation of my family to not come from the boarding school system. So with that, the family that I grew up in were very, um, very what I call secretive and from the underground generation. Being that they were from boarding school, a lot of things that come with our culture, you know, being our, especially our language, had to go underground. And a lot of it wasn't it wasn't taught or spoken in our homes, as you as you've heard early testimony. And my fam, unfortunately, my family was one of those people. I've had fluent. My father is Dr. Cecil Whitehat, and my mother is the late Dolores White Lance. My uncle is May One Star from Rosebud, South Dakota, and they were all products of the boarding school system. Therefore, they did not teach me the language. So, in this past 16 years that I've been in education, it's been. I made it a responsibility of mine to bring that to the forefront with our young people and our children through education, implementing it through curriculum and indigenizing curriculum and language within a school system at Todd County. So to bring this to the forefront, I want to say Lila Wopi Latanka to Troy Heinert for bringing this to the table. It's been a long, it's been a long time. It's been a long, a long haul for our people. So I want to, I appreciate you guys hearing us today and taking into consideration the beauty and the sacredness of our language and expanding that and bringing it to the forefront through the state. So just with that, I want to say, well, Pila Tonka for your time and considering this. All right, thank you. Further proponent testimony. Further proponent testimony. Okay, welcome. Once you're seated, you may introduce yourself and you have the floor. My name is Winian Lock. I am from um, District 27, Wakbala, South Dakota. I have been a long time advocate for Lakota language and, and also a teacher. And I'm really proud to see my students here. I'm really thankful that they took the time to show the importance of this. But one of the things I really want to reiterate, and our language has been protecting us, and we had numerous language people that have been fighting for our language. But throughout the Korean War, World War One, and World War II, our language was used to protect our land. We were used as co-talkers to protect our land. And I feel that this is the best way to honor those co-talkers, is to acknowledging our language that was used to protect this land. <laughs> One of the things that, as non-Lakota, Dakota, because we are a immersed nation and we have many different um, cultures and backgrounds, but acknowledging languages boosts brain powers within our youth, within our adults, and it hits levels in our brains where we can do cognitive thinking and critical thinking. It improves memory loss. Having multiple languages that are acknowledged improves memory loss, and it actually helps um, with any memory ailments that we have. It also enhances our ability to multitask. To think in multiple different languages allows us to think, uh, and we can better handle these multiple tasks at once. So there's many benefits of having multiple languages that are acknowledged. It sharpens our brains. It enhances us to study better. It also helps us with making decisions because we see the world in a different view and we see a different concept. And that's where it really helps us to have 
better decision-making skills. So these are just the benefits for the non-Lakota Dakotas out there that um, that really want to improve and acknowledge the first languages that are here. It actually, when you speak multiple languages, it improves your first language. As someone clearly stated when Faith was speaking, she speaks eloquently in Dakota and in English. So if you want to see the English ratings go up within our youth, then you have to incorporate different languages with them. It improves in not only in language, but also improves in academics, in math and sciences. So if you want your child to excel in mathematics or in science, teach them a different language. Have them grow up to be multilingual. So again, it comes back down to better um, better decision making and careers. So people that are multilingual, uh, they they pick institutions they want to work for that will improve the community, and that's why this is beneficial not only for us as Lakota Dakota people that are historically from this land, but this is why it's important to have non Lakotas Dakotas acknowledge our language, because our language has been here and it has. You've been used to protect our land, but it also enhances and improves their lives also, not just ours. So thank you for your time. Okay, thank you. Further proponent testimony on uh, Senate, amended Senate Bill 126. Okay, welcome, sir. Once you're seated, if you introduce yourself and you have the floor. How may I be? I'm about to ask Chazé mi tawa padani ko kipeshni. Ashichu or ska chazé kip spotted eagle. I am a tribal historic preservation officer for the Yankton Sioux Tribe. Uh, I work daily on trying to coordinate the regulatory with construction and protecting sacred sites and protecting history, but of all of the things that we do, the one that needs the most uh, protection is the language. When looking into the Western pedagogy of archaeology and anthropology, usually if you go to any major university in the state of South Dakota, whether it's Ivy League, you'll find Dakota studies or you'll find native studies in the basement with a pedagogy that studies dead, dead cultures. And from what you see today, we're, we're not going anywhere. Um, for my mom, she is face spotted. He goes, she's the one that spoke in the beginning. My son is Tokana Iqban Naji. His name is uh, first to stand up and show himself. And uh, on the daily, I work with my limited knowledge of the language and speaking to him. And he's rapidly excelling with the um, immersion that, that my mom is speaking with him. But I know as a young person coming up through the system of education, if you have your identity, you're stronger. If you know who you are, you're stronger. I mean, a lot of your guys' children and grandchildren are afforded the opportunity to know that their first language is English. And English is the strongest language in this country right now. Uh, many of our children grow up saying, I wish I could learn my language, but English is the strongest language. And so by recognizing that this language needs help in uh, moving forward, um, I took a linguistics class at Portland State University. And I'm so happy today it was proven wrong, but there was a linguist that was there and he said, if a majority of your population is over 60 years old that are fluent, in 30 years your language will be gone. So for me, that's like today's a good day. Because I got to see a little man that can speak, you know. And so for you that are going to be doing this and, and helping, helping with this, I just really urge you to take a look at how serious this is to a nation of people who have been marginalized by, you know, English. And I think like a majority of languages throughout the world say English is backwards and the way that they it's laid out. So if a kid can learn English and also learn his language as... Wania said before their, their their scores are going to go through the roof. And so um, I myself in high school, I opted to not take Spanish and take Dakota language through through my mom. 
And I, I, I was a great opportunity for myself, but I would, I think that that's something that you guys are going to be able to provide for the people. I just want to say that much. Thanks. Thank you. Yep. Further proponent testimony. Further proponent testimony. Okay, welcome. Once you're seated, uh, introduce yourself and you have the floor. Thank you. Um, my name is Tashina Banks Rama. I am the daughter of Dennis Banks, the co-founder of the American Indian wow. Movement, and the daughter of Kamuk Nichols, who is Oglala Sioux tribe member in Pine Ridge, South Dakota. Um, I am uh, also the mother to the young kindergarten immersion teacher who is up here speaking, and um, two of my daughters are in the immersion program today. So language revitalization in my family is a top priority. Um, I also want to, for the record, um, say hello to my husband, Matt Rama, who is home and who is a huge um, proponent of this bill and also of the language. Um, I come here right now to sit and read to you a letter from the executive Executive Vice President of Red Cloud Indian School, which is where I work. Um, Red Cloud Indian School has um, made a K through 12 curriculum over the last several years, and um, language we have seen the language in the curriculum produce very high outcomes, academic outcomes for our students. Um, so, if I may just start. To members of the South Dakota Legislature, how mitaku yapi chante washte na pechi yuzapo pelo, how my relatives, I greet all of you with a heartfelt handshake. On behalf of the students, teachers, and administrators at Red Cloud Indian School, I am writing to express our wholehearted support of Senate Bill 126. The bill would make Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota the official indigenous languages of the state of South Dakota while honoring the efforts of Native people who are working tirelessly to revitalize our endangered traditional languages, this legislation would also encourage a deeper and much needed understanding of the many ways indigenous cultures and values continue to strengthen our society today. We humbly urge all South Dakota legislators to vote in support of Senate Bill 126. Among the Oglala Lakota people, it is understood that our culture cannot exist without our language. In the 1960s, educators at Red Cloud Indian School began to bring Lakota language into the classroom to create a learning environment reflecting the identity of Red Cloud students. Then, just over a decade ago, Red Cloud launched the Lakota Language Project and created the nation's first comprehensive K-12 Lakota language curriculum to support a new generation of fluent Lakota speakers and empower our students to take on the work of revitalizing this essential part of Lakota culture. Put simply, the impact that language learning has been profound. Although estimates tell us there are only 6,000 fluent Lakota speakers living today, today the language is coming alive again in our classroom and across the Pine Ridge Reservation. Lakota is spoken inside our classrooms and out on our sports fields and playgrounds, in our cafeterias, on our school buses, and in the homes of our students and families. Our teachers say their students are more engaged in learning and that academic outcomes are improving across the board. In subjects as diverse as English and physics, and parents and families are starting to learn and speak Lakota with their children to restore a sense of cultural strength in our community. Speaking, our indigenous language is helping our students to develop a deeper connection to their Lakota identity. After many generations of cultural loss, they are reclaiming and celebrating their Lakota heritage, seeing it as powerful and positive. Language is changing their lives in a multitude of ways and empowering them to accomplish extraordinary things. The passage of Senate Bill 126 would send our students a clear message that indigenous culture and language is honored and valued, not just in Native American communities, but across our state. Its passage would honor the important role of Lakota and other indigenous peoples have played out in our state's history and the contributions they continue to make today as advocates, healthcare professionals, educators, so much more. Indeed, if written into state law, Senate Bill 126 would make a powerful statement to our students and Native youth across our state that Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota voices are being heard in a whole new way. Wopi Latanka, Robert Braveheart, Senior Executive Vice President, Red Cloud Indian School.
Okay. May we have a copy of that for our record? You may. Thank okay. You. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. you. Okay. We're, uh, our 20 minutes kind of went by the wayside a long time ago, so if uh, we'll allow a, a little bit more of proponent uh, testimony, but if we could... Uh, uh, try to keep it somewhat brief as we do. We still have quite a bit to cover here today, but I'll uh, offer for more further proponent testimony. Further proponent testimony. Okay. Okay, sir, once you're seated, uh, introduce yourself and you have the floor. Oh, la cota ya pima yung la cota yung khan ni hani wekta na mi trai te ko akak la cota ya pikile mie na niep na un kiep la cota ya pikile wa khan kun La cota ya pikile ni. Na ihani vicho ya ke wa. Na wa. Ni kha ihani. Te oya te Buffalo Nation. Na na wa shun kha ka ekta mahel un pikapi. Wind cave. A petima el lakhota kiha makhoche kilil gliahapi, hippi. Naheha wogalaka pishni setcha. Yukha tatanka kilehi najina ugiake. Yapi kile lohak teloe. Mit han chan kile un ya ni pikte loe. Un vayata pikte. Un vipre ya kaza pikte. Un okhalia ya un pikte. Itin toki lakhota oyate ki hani le na ni chap. Halebi choya ke ke tohanta ki yo hawa u. Natrakoja kelena uchak yak. Wana le wane te ma wikchem na shako in sam shagloha. I am 78 years old now. And I'm very happy today that my grandson's gonna carry on this Lakota language. When I grew up, I went to school at Red Scaffold School, which is 20 miles south of Faith. I went to school there for eight years, and there was no Lakota taught. Lakota was not taught in schools until maybe... When I was a senior, I went to Eagle Butte, Cheyenne Eagle Butte High School. Lakota was not taught. Culture was not taught. After I left Shiny Gubi School, I left. And I joined the service, and I stayed in there for 20 years. When I came back, I went back to school, finished my school. And I looked around, and our kids, our children, were not speaking. We're not being taught Lakota in these schools. Today, I want to thank the Red Cloud School and all the schools 
The Oglala Nation, they have over 12 schools, and they all teach Lakota. Well, Kvarste, I'm from Cheyenne River. We have schools that are all teaching Lakota. Standing Rock, Rosebud, Sisite. We're all teaching schools now, and I'm really happy for that. And this bill, what is it, 126? 126 will even make us stronger. And I want to thank everybody here for their support. So I want to, at this time, I would like to tell my grandson to say some more Lakota words. Because every time he comes to my house, I sit down and talk to him in Lakota. It makes me proud. It makes me happy. And it makes us strong. Okay, little buddy, you got the floor. Nilakhotayalo. Nakuyalo oyake. Oloma ahia, what one? Oh, oh, okay, I don't care yet. Waka tanka. Ape to kile wash ag maya yo aye aye waka tanka ape to kile wash ag maya yo aye yo where's it to go? Okay, thank you. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, further proponent testimony. We'll allow one more. Uh, we're really running out of time. I don't want to be rude by any means, but uh, we need to try to get through our schedule today. Good morning, sir. You have the floor. Morning. I'm about to watch that. I'll try to keep it down 20 minutes at least. <laughs> I'm a proponent for this bill. Uh, my name is Wayne Frederick. Um, Lakota Machiapi Pehan Haska. Hi, Aaron. Uh, I come to you from uh, Rosebud Sioux Tribe, Sichangu, Lakota. Um, you know, a bill like this is one step further to uh, respecting the existence of 250,000 members that reside within South Dakota. And... It allows us to justify, you know, our duality of living here. We've always been here, and we have to be able to, um, it's 2019. We have to learn how to live together, work together, and be a better, better place. In schools, along with the Ocheti Shakoni standards, it's one more step further, further to justify that we are allowed to teach it even deeper, other than just touching on to it with certain subjects. So I thank you all for taking the time to listen to all of us uh, give our testimony, and I hope you further it on. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this time, if there are still folks that would certainly like to be recognized, if you want to come forward quickly and be just a me too, we will allow that. Okay, welcome. Mr. Chair. Uh, members of the committee, I am Representative Puri Puir from District 27. I just want to go on record. I can't add any more than what our constituents has add. I um, just want to say, me too, please um, consider this bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any further me too's? Okay, you have the floor. Good morning, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. My name is Rebecca Turk. I'm the registered lobbyist for Dakota Rural Action. We'd also like to register our Me Too. Thanks. Okay, thank you. Good morning, Good Mr. morning, Chair. Senator. Good morning. Um, Senator Red Don Foster, District 27. Just want to go on record saying Me Too. We'll be up. Thank you. Further proponent Me Too's. 
In Hello, morning, Mitaki Api, Blaise Starkey Amachi Api, Wakpa Washte Mataha. Um, my name is Blaise Starkey. Uh, I'd also like to go on the record with uh, Mich E Epre, me too. All right, thank you. Further me too's. <laughs> Good morning. Hey, honey, watch the Medakiapi. Ampo Yokpi, we imachiapi, Alex Romero Frederick. Ogalala Lakota Hamacha. Nish, yeah, me too. All right, thank you. Uh, do we have a couple more me too's here? All right. Do you have the floor? What do you do? Shai, see guy go in my chappy. Shaidio Machiapi. Christina Gallego Machiapi, and we are here to testify in support of this bill. Thank you. All right, thank you. Okay. I, uh, yeah, we've got a few more yet. Okay. Go ahead, sir. You have the floor. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Representatives, I'm Mark Winnegar from the Sierra Club, and the Sierra Club asks you to support this bill. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Further proponent testimony. I'm in it, Senate Bill 126. You have the floor, sir. Yeah, My name is Phil Tuigo. I'm the executive director of the Sichanga Lakota Treaty Council uh, from Rosebud, South Dakota. I'm here to uh, uh, support the Senate Bill 126 on behalf of the chiefs that signed the Fort Laramie Treaty of 1868. It's been uh, 150 years. And uh, this is a long time coming. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. I think at this time we will close it for proponent testimony. And the way the system works, we have to offer it for opponent testimony. Is there anyone in the body of the audience that would like to oppose amended Senate Bill 126? Seeing none, uh, Senator Heiner, did you have just a few quick words you want to add as the prime sponsor of this, or shall we continue on? Okay, we're going to close the testimony from the floor and offer it to the committee for uh, uh, discussion, questions, or action. Sure. Senator Bolin. Thank you. I have a question for Mr. I think it's Mr. Hill that uh, was a um, gentleman who I think he was the second speaker. Okay, Mr. Hill, if you could come forward and uh, once he's seated, uh, Senator Bolin, please state your question. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Hill, can you explain a little bit more about your the program that it appears that when I picked up that you founded or you were instrumental in starting uh, sure. in your particular geographical location? Just tell us more about it, how it works, and what are your ultimate what is the ultimate objective? So um, most of the, the the majority of the young children that you see here are part of the program. So we are a full Lakota immersion program, um, and actually the the school that we the school that we have is considered a Lakota language medium school, meaning that essentially um, ninety nine point nine percent of schools classrooms, grades in South Dakota are English medium, that they're taught within the medium of the English language. So at our school, because it's a full immersion program, every subject, um, math, science, reading, language, arts, is all taught through Lakota language, that they are fully within the language during the great majority of the day that they're in the classroom. Um, we started the program in 2012, and... Uh, Shadiam, Amos, some of, some of the kids who were up here earlier, they were babies. Um, they, they were one and a half years old, and they are our, um, our pioneer cohort, and the program has been expanding with them. So every year we bring in five more to the program on the young end, one and a half years old, two years old, and every year we expand the program up a year. So currently we have four years, a four-year cohort at the daycare, the immersion daycare. That's a feeder program for the elementary, which is based at Red Cloud Indian School. And we currently have kindergarten, first grade, and second grade and within our full immersion program. Next year, we'll add third grade, then we'll add fourth grade. The idea is to ultimately have a full K through 12 immersion. Um, the, the model that we have been very inspired by is in the state of Hawaii, who are known within indigenous language. 
circles to be kind of the gold standard of language revitalization. And in Hawaii, you can actually be educated in the Hawaiian language from essentially from birth all the way through getting a PhD. You can do it all the way in the language. So that's that's our inspiration. And our, our program is entirely under um, Thunder Valley Community Development Corporation, which is a locally run uh, nonprofit that was founded and has existed on the Pine Ridge Reservation for, I believe, 11 years now. Okay. Follow up, if I could, please. Uh, okay, go ahead. Thank you. Um, is the goal to have dual language ability for all of the students that you teach? Um, ultimately, yes. And, and be, because the students, you know, the, the primary language of the home is English. And sometimes we get asked, well, how, you know, how do the kids learn English? Well, the, the answer is they learn English everywhere else. But within our program, um, what one interesting thing that we've discovered and hopefully we, 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 we intend to really study this and, and maybe even publish on it because it's fascinating. Our students, are their, their literacy is entirely done in the Lakota language. So they learn how to read and write Lakota, which is actually a lot easier than learning to read and write English because it's entirely phonetic. Um, a lot of our students, or a, a significant number of our students we have discovered have actually learned how to at, at least read English. They can read English and, and we, we, we did not teach them that. And they didn't necessarily learn it outside of school, but that they've been able to transfer the literacy skills that they've learned within the classroom to this other language that they were orally fluent in, but not necessarily literate in. And we know that eventually our kids are going to go into mainstream education, you know, whether it's in sixth grade, if that's as far as we're able to go, or whether it's when they, they graduate and go to college. And we want them to be as ready, if not higher, than their peers who are in the mainstream classroom in terms of being ready to go into the, to the mainstream um, educational system. And what we've seen from other programs, again, the Hawaiians have been very... Um, diligent at collecting data on this is that kids that go through a, a bilingual or an immersion language situation are often uh, better situated than their mainstream peers in terms of where they are at, at grade level. Early on, there's often somewhat of a delay because they're not being educated in English medium, but over the years, they not only catch up, but they, they exceed the, um, the grade levels. Follow up. That answer. Follow up. Got one more follow up. Thank sir. you. Uh, so, how many of the um, is this the only program that you that is ex in existence at the present time uh, in your particular geographical location? No, it's not. There is um, so Oglala Lakota College, the the tribal college on Pine Ridge, also has um, an immersion program. Uh, we are we're the only two full immersion programs on Pine Ridge. There's also one up on Standing Rock. If you ask me that in five years um, or, or ten years, but even five years, there are many, many of our colleagues out there. You know, kind of the world of of indigenous language revitalization in South Dakota is a fairly small world, and we all know each other and we share share data and share resources. Over in Rosebud, up in Cheyenne River, East River, in Rapid City, there are many, many educators, many language activists who are working hard to develop programs based on, based on our models, based on what they're doing at Standing Rock. And what, what we see for the near future is that there is going to be, um, a lot of new programs that are going to be following this this model. So right, right now on Pine Ridge, there's there's the two of us, but I would predict that within the next ten years there will be at least a dozen um, Lakota Dakota language programs within South Dakota. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Further questions? Further, uh, Senator Youngberg. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have a question for the prime sponsor. 
Go ahead and state your question. Thank you, Mr. Um, has there been in other states, I have to believe, and I and I have to excuse me on the languages or the dialects in other states would probably be different, but is there bills that have been introduced or passed in other states that are similar to this in any way? Go ahead, sir. Mr. Chair, thank you for the question, Senator. Um, there have been, and it's been in Hawaii and Alaska. So in South Dakota, we could be the first in the continental United States to pass uh, indigenous languages. Okay, further questions? Senator Greenfield. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I have maybe a series of questions for the prime sponsor, if I might. Go ahead and state your question. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Senator, I appreciate you bringing this forth, and I appreciate the, the folks who have testified here today and, and know that my line of questioning isn't <clears throat> to throw any monkey wrench into the, the situation. I just, as I took a look at this, first I misunderstood what the bill actually did. And I'll, I'll explain that. You say in the, if the bill is inserting new language into existing statute. The common language of the state is English. Currently, it goes on to say the common language is designated as, as the language of any official public document or record and any official public meeting. We're inserting in between those two thoughts and the official indigenous, well, and then we have the, the amendment, uh, indigenous language of the state is the language of, you know how to say it, I don't. Uh, that's the one. <clears throat> and, and then it goes on. So at first I thought, oh, no, we're going to require that all publications um, insert the language, the dialects of Lakota, Nakota, and Dakota, and um, that we then make um, all, all public documents and records available in those languages as well. That's not your intention, clearly. After after further read, reading it, and I would ask you to opine on that. Go ahead. Go ahead, Mr. Chair. And and first off, I I apologize to the elders in our room for for speaking before you. Um, culturally, that's that's an appropriate uh, thing to make sure we get out there, um, Senator. That, that's a great question because I, I think some people may have viewed it the same way you did, and and it was written this way. Um, I think, and with the amendment, tightens it up a little more. So the common language in this state is English. We, we understand that all the publications, you know, school books, driver's license books, those will continue to be uh, published, and English is the common language. And when we wrote it as official indigenous language, um, that really separated it. And in talking with the LRC staff, they said, well, instead of creating a, a new statute or a, a new section, they thought that that this would uh, suffice in in being separate enough, but this is probably the section of code where it, it needed to stay. And Mr. Chair, go ahead. That was going to be my follow up, and thank you for um, already trying to answer or anticipating my question. My my thought was going to be that we instead say that a new section of code be established, and and that maybe it even be one twenty seven twenty dash or point one or something like that to just establish that the official indigenous language is again you can say it I can't um, but would there would there be a problem with doing that um, as you see it or um, I guess then then the the I guess the rest of the question is probably subject to committee discussion um, whether or not we're satisfied that we're not messing things up by muddying the waters and asserting the official indigenous language in between where, we, where we're talking about the common language. So if you could. Mr. Chair. Go ahead, sir. And, and I, I appreciate that, Senator. And I guess I would defer to the to code council. Um, it, I have no problem with it. I just want it to pass. I don't care what section it's in um, or if it has it, its own number. Um, but... I, you know, this when I when I came with the idea, this is where uh, LRC staff said it should be. If they think it if it needs to be one twenty seven twenty point one, I'm fine with that. I I would defer to them. I'm not an attorney or further follow up. I didn't stay Senator at Holiday Inn either. So. 
Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I guess I would I would ask if if um, LRC staff would uh, at least care to weigh in as to what my question was. If we could if we could establish that this same language be maintained, but that it be a new section. And again, my recommendation would be that it be inserted after 127-20, and I haven't looked at the code to see if there's a point one. But, or do you see any problem potentially with leaving it as is? section for 127, and the code council would put it in the most appropriate place on it. Okay, please share what, what you, uh, share with the rest of us what you just said. A little voice in my right ear said we could do that. We could um, establish it as a new section, and code council could put it where it's most appropriate. Um, so, again, I think that we've heard great testimony here today, only about a quarter of which I understood because I don't understand your native tongue and I barely understand my own. But um, I think you, sir, have brought a good bill forward, a good idea, a good concept, and we've heard the value of that. And so I don't want to stand in the way of moving this forward. I would just like it to be where it best fits in our statute and where it creates the least confusion, as I've already alluded to. Do you view that as a friendly amendment, sir? I would view that as a friendly amendment, okay. Mr. Chair. Is this something we'd like to do here in committee this morning? I'll move it at the appropriate time, Mr. Chair. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator Kennedy. Just if I may respond, uh, being a lawyer <clears throat> and being used to reading code, I think actually the bill as drafted is clear <clears throat> because it clearly provides that the common language remains English and that the recognition of the official indigenous languages does not change that. If we pull that portion out and put it in a separate statute, I think it does become confusion, uh, confusing. Because then you've got a reference to a common language, a reference to an indigenous language. What's the difference? I think having them in the same section is actually clearer. That's one lawyer's opinion. Further comments? <clears throat> Further comments, discussion, or action? Sen uh, Senator Greenfield. Given the um, comments from the previous speaker and recognizing that, I, I still would like to see the two thoughts um, not, not intertwined my my suggestion would be, and I guess I'll move this for the sake of discussion, that we take the new language um, and establish it as a, its own sentence. So the common language of the state is English. The common language is designated as the language for any or of any public document or record and official public any official public meeting, and that we insert the language after that. The official indigenous languages of the state, or the official indigenous language of the state, is the language of the Osheti Shakowin. <laughs> I took a shot, <laughs> etc. Okay, you're you're making a verbal amendment at this time. That we uh, re, that we. Just flip where the position is, but leave it in this section. Okay. I'll is second it, the motion. Does everyone understand what, what we're doing here? Okay. I, uh, all those in favor of the verbal amendment to amended Senate Bill 126 say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carried. Further discussion on our uh, Senator Kennedy? No, I don't. I'm good. Mr. Chairman. Okay. Chair. Senator Greenfield. I will move the due pass on Senate Bill 126 as amended. Second. Okay, we've got a motion made by Senator Greenfield, seconded by Senator Youngberg for due pass on Senate Bill 126 as amended. 
Any further comments on the motion? I would like to um, defer to Senator Heinert, but I do want to tell the shy one, shy one, you've got the best hair out there. You've got the best hair of anybody who came before us today, and you have nothing to be shy about. <laughs> Senator Heinert. Well, thank you, Mr. Chair, and, and thank you, committee. I, I, uh, I really appreciate the time that you have given this, and I really appreciate uh, all of the people that, that braved this cold weather to come up and testify to the importance of keeping our language and our culture growing and uh, surviving. This, uh, I got a little emotional today when I heard that young man speak. Because not too many years ago, you could not do that in these halls. And this is something that we have the chance to to right some wrongs, and I, I really appreciate the time you've given this and, and the respect uh, shown to the people. Okay, further comments on the motion before us? Seeing none, we, we do have a, a due pass motion be, made by Senator Greenfield, seconded by Senator Youngberg for due pass on Senate Bill 126 as amended. Those in favor of the motion will say aye. Those opposed will say nay. Madam Secretary, please call a roll. Senator Bolin? Aye. Greenfield? Aye. Heinert? Aye. Kennedy? Aye. Langer? Aye. Nostrup? Aye. Youngberg? Aye. Klum? Aye. Ewing? Aye. Unanimous. Okay, we do have a unanimous due pass motion on Senate Bill 126 as amended. I want to thank everyone for their, their uh, kind time.